In this little SharePoint Basics video clip, I'll show you how to work with folders and metadata in um, SharePoint. I definitely was one of those people who used to say, do not use folders, metadata is the best, but keep in mind that there is a place for everything. If I was a user that had to upload thousands of documents to SharePoint every day, there is no way you can pay me to fill in metadata. So folders also works great to, uh, to, when, to use with documents when you sync the library down to your file explorer because you can see the categorization of the content as you would your own documents. Metadata, multiple metadata columns doesn't show in your file explorer. So if you are planning on, exp um, um, on syncing that library down to your explorer, folders definitely works a bit better. Something else to also keep in mind is that when Microsoft Teams gets created, it actually creates a folder for each channel for the Microsoft team in SharePoint. So any documents that you share in your Microsoft Teams will be put into a folder in the SharePoint library. So that's also where we're using folders. Now, of course, easy to use a folder. We can open it. We can have subfolders. We can upload documents. Be careful not to go too deep with those nested folders. The more levels you go into, the more difficult it is for users to navigate and the poorer the search works. So I uh, prefer to use uh, one or two levels deep. For my documents for the folders, I don't go much more than that, and I then use good naming conventions to help me categorize my content. In this example, you'll see yeah, I've got a library that works with metadata, not with folders. So at the top there, you'll see a column for department, and there's a column for document type. In the next video clip, I'm going to show you how to create those columns, so that'll definitely help a lot. But when I then upload a document, it'll then ask me for those documents that um, the properties is assigned to those documents. So let's just pick a, uh, a new uh, document there and you'll see that as soon as I've added it, it's gonna tell me that the properties are missing and you can actually complete these in this, this little info in panel on the right hand side. So this is where I can go and change the property of this document to say that it's um, operations. So let's just pick um, operations there. And uh, this one I can say that it's a procedure and that uh, should update the properties of your documents. When I look at all the rest of the documents as well, this will definitely scare users because they're so used to folders that categorizes their content. The advantage we have that when we um, use metadata is the type of views we can create. So with metadata, I can really write beautiful grouped views and filtered views. Think of a pivot chart in, uh, in Excel, how it actually groups data together and stuff, and that's exactly what metadata does. So if I go to uh, the views drop down here, you'll see that I've already written some, and there's a view called process then document type. So here, it actually groups it by process and then groups it by document type. This is the way that you want your users to work. Of course, you don't want them to work in that big crazy um, um, open view. So there as well, you can see there it is a document type by process. So it just looks at the documents in a different way. There's all my policies. There's all my processes. Then um, also, if, uh, if I go to the views, I can also write a view that filters content. So now I can go and say, only show me documents where the department equals to marketing. Here we go. I'm in the marketing view. Let me just show you what this view looks like. If I go to edit current view, And in this view, you'll see that I said, only show items when department is equal to marketing. And then I can also group the view and say first by document, and then I can even group it by owner or date or anything else that I want to group it by. So that's filtered views, which really, really works well. And uh, we, which is where you get a lot of um, benefit from, uh, from using your metadata. In the next um, video clip, I'm going to be talking about how you add those metadata columns. And this, of course, is not just for documents. Please remember that. You can also use this for custom lists and for other type of lists that you use in SharePoint. So we'll catch up about that soon. But remember, when uh, you use metadata, you have to complete the properties. And uh, when you use uh, documents or libraries with folders, you then put them into folder libraries. Cool thing about uh, the metadata in the newer versions is that I can now also drag items into other views to assign the same properties. So for example, this um, document that's lying under operations, if I select that and I drag it into this compliance section, it'll actually update the metadata, which is a pretty cool thing to be able to do. So I hope that that helps you a lot. See you, uh, see you soon and we'll talk about creating those columns in SharePoint.